Good evening. My name is Brandi Shumake and I'm the president of the Lexington Singers. Welcome and thank you for joining us as we pay tribute to the Lexington Singers founder, Ms. Phyllis Jeunesse. Tonight's experience will give you just a glimpse into the life and legacy of Ms. Jeunesse, but we are so thrilled to celebrate her through song and story. Now, unlike a typical concert experience, we are actually asking you to use your cellular device. We are asking that you like this concert and share it with your friends, as well as the Lexington Singers social media pages. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with the world. Please share, share, share. And lastly, if you feel as connected to music and community as we do, then we are asking for your help in sharing the gift of music with the world by considering making a gift to the Lexington Singers or donation at www.lexing.org. Thank you again for being a part of this virtual concert experience and please do enjoy the concert. Thank you, Brandy. Welcome to the Lexington Singers first ever virtual fall concert. I'm Jeff Johnson, the music director of the Lexington Singers. Tonight we're honoring Phyllis Janess, who founded our group in 1959. Phyllis passed away in March of this year at the age of 97. All of the music that you hear will be from the Phyllis Jeunesse era. Sometimes you'll hear virtual choir performances by the present day Lexington singers. Sometimes you'll also hear pieces lifted from the vinyl recordings of the early group, the Lexington singers, way back in the early 60s. We'll also feature some musical tributes and some uh, some nice words from people who knew and loved Phyllis. Let's get it started with a piece by Franz Joseph Haydn from his Oratorio, The Creation. This is Achieve It Is the Glorious Work, which was featured on the very first concert of the Lexington Singers. Alice Hollingsworth, and I'm pleased to share some reminiscences about my time with Phyllis Jeunesse. I came to the University of Kentucky's music program as a freshman in 1957. Miss Jeunesse, as we students called her, had only been on the faculty since 1954. However, she had made a name for herself among both students and faculty as a person who was determined, capable, and in charge of any and all situations. Her sonorous laugh, which resonated often, was a trademark. I spent two summers in her voice studio and in summer operas and learned to wave my arms in her choral conducting class. Fast forward a few years, my husband Bertries and I joined Lexington Singers in 1966, just in time to venture to New York City to sing the block sacred service with the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra under Phyllis's tutelage. She was always game for new adventures, so in 1975, we put on our pastel-checked polyester apparel and headed to Romania, which was a true test of our mettle, as Romania was a very communist country still. Many interesting situations transpired, but Phyllis remained calm and always at the helm, at least in front of us. 
She conducted singers' rehearsals with determination and always with an eye toward excellence. Once we were asked by the Cincinnati Symphony to come up and perform a work that had many dissonant passages. Phyllis drilled and drilled until she was confident that we could sing every note correctly. Imagine her great dismay at the first rehearsal when maestro Max Rudolph told us, quote, don't worry about what notes you sing, the orchestra will cover you, unquote. However, Phyllis remained calm and collected. She had a way of making rehearsals go by quickly and always had mantras for us to employ in order to produce the best choral performance. My favorite one, which I can still hear in my head and have incorporated into my own choral conducting lexicon, is one any choral singer recognizes, and I quote Phyllis verbatim, get off the dot. She was unforgettable. powerful, robust, and articulate sound of that early group of Lexington singers. Only 30 voices when the group started back in 1959. Tonight, as we said, we're featuring music from the Phyllis Jeunesse era. All of this music was music that was performed by the Lexington singers in the early days of our organization. During the pandemic, the Lexington singers have been rehearsing primarily via Zoom, but we have had a small ensemble of singers who've been coming to our regular rehearsal time every Monday night, and they are singing and helping to facilitate the, uh, the rehearsals on Zoom for the large group. We're going to feature that small ensemble now, performing a piece called Ave Verum Corpus, Hail True Body, by the Renaissance composer William Byrd. This piece was on the very first concert of the Lexington Singers in 1959.
August 27, 1964. Dear singers, August is near its end, and rapidly approaching September heralds the beginning of a new season for the Lexington Singers. Five years have passed since our beginning, each marked by a growing enthusiastic membership who have undertaken an increasingly ambitious musical program and accomplished the same meritoriously. It is hoped that 1964-65 will be marked by this same progression. In order to do so, our veterans are requested to return, or better still, come and bring along your talented friends that might be willing candidates for membership. Our particular needs for the approaching season are for tenors and sopranos. Our first meeting for auditions, a little business, and refreshments will be held September 14, 1964, in the reception room of the Fine Arts Building. The first formal practice session will follow on September 21, 1964, at the usual hour of 7.30 p.m. I hope each of you has had an enjoyable, safe, and profitable summer vacation, and that you return rested and ready to tackle another challenging program, which I am certain Phyllis has chosen for us. We are particularly enthusiastic about plans for our pop concert, and possibly an out-of-town singing date or two, and would be disappointed not to see each of you share our work and fun. Sincerely, Frank Counts, President. I'd like to share a few memories about how Phyllis has influenced my life. I've made a few notes to keep me on track. Ivy and I moved to Lexington with our three boys in August of 1990. That fall, we joined the Lexington Singers, which was then under the direction of James Ross Bean. As members of the Singers, we were aware of Phyllis Janess as the founder of the group, and we enjoyed hearing the stories that were shared among the members about the early days with trips to Cincinnati and to sing abroad. A couple of years after moving here, Ivy's mother, Marguerite, decided to move up here as well to be near her family, especially her grandsons. As luck would have it, she found a house just a few doors away from where Phyllis lived. That was a fortuitous event because the two ladies became close friends very quickly. And through that friendship of Marguerite and Phyllis, Ivy and I got to know Phyllis in a very personal and close way, and we became fast friends as well. We got to know Phyllis not only as an accomplished musician, an educator, and a community activist, but also as a forthright, warm, and truly caring person. 
After retirement, Phyllis used her teaching skills to raise money for several causes that she cared deeply about. The program Phyllis started to generate funds for these projects was Be a Better Singer. This program was open to anyone who wanted to improve their singing skills and who was willing to do the work. Students' ages ranged from middle schoolers to those who were well beyond retirement age. 100% of the tuition collected went to charitable causes. The combination of her passion for music, her love for her students, and her desire to make a positive impact on the world gave her amazing energy and a zest for life that shone in spite of the mounting physical challenges. I became a member of Be a Better Singer in 2006 and continued to study with Phyllis up until the last week of her life. Over the years, class members developed a strong bond with Phyllis and with each other. In the course of teaching us how to become better singers, she taught us how to become comfortable knowing and accepting ourselves for who we are. She helped us become better people as well as better singers. Of all the things Phyllis taught me about singing, the most profound did not deal with technique. She said the goal of practice is to allow technique to become second nature. When the song is sung and shared with others, it should not appear that the singer is counting measures, concerned about pitch, or how long to sustain a particular note. The song should be shared freely and without any distracting affectation. But more important than having a song totally prepared is having something to share. Why are you singing the song in the first place? I can still hear Phyllis saying, if you can't sing the song in a way that touches the heart of the listener, better to just stay at home. When Jeff Johnson asked if I, as one of Phyllis's longtime students, would contribute a song to this program, I had to think long and hard before agreeing to do it. At first, I was worried about choosing the right song. What would Phyllis have suggested I sing? I already knew she would have turned that question right back on me. What song could I sing that would allow me to say something about how I felt at this moment? I looked through the early Lexington Singers programs and found a song that was used in the 60s that was also a song that I had worked on while studying with Phyllis. I hope you enjoy this version of Stardust by Hoagie Carmichael. Once again with you. 
Thank you, Andy. When you hear pieces tonight that are performed by the virtual choir of the present-day Lexington Singers, those are produced by our assistant conductor, Johnny Dean. Every singer has recorded their own part on their phone or on their laptop computer, and they've sent those to Johnny electronically, and he has miraculously put them together to create these virtual choir performances. When Phyllis Jeunesse started the Lexington Singers back in 1959, she committed to doing the finest quality choral literature by the greatest composers. Here's Johannes Brahms' folk song, I'd Enter Your Garden. In the summer of 1974, I moved to Lexington to join the faculty of the University of Kentucky. That winter, I attended a Christmas concert by the Lexington Singers, directed by Phyllis Jeunesse. The first dulcet tones brought goosebumps and memories of singing in schools and church choirs. One sunny Sunday morning, 30 years and many concerts later, my friend Jan Friedel called, breathless. Phyllis Jeunesse was starting a voice class at 2 p.m. that very day in Temple Adith Israel. We were the first to arrive. There followed years of friendship and musical growth. I learned to sing of frogs leaping from fountains, of lemon-colored dodos, quiet forests, and mystical Russian sprites, all in their native languages. And I learned how very generous with her resources and time Phyllis was. She didn't charge much for her wonderful classes, and she donated all the proceeds to charity. And every Thursday afternoon, she could be found standing downtown with the peace rally. 
Phyllis was dedicated to being the very best human being and singer that she could be. Her sense of discipline inspired her students to be the very best that they could be. She practiced her art every day and encouraged, expected us to do the same. I can hear her now. Even 15 minutes a day will produce noticeable improvement. She instilled in me a practice routine that continues to guide my musical endeavors. Your instrument is your body. Keep it well nourished and exercised. To learn a new song, first study the text, speak it, let its meaning inform your singing. Notice the song's time signature, key, repeats. Tap out the rhythm with a pencil. Now speak the text in rhythm. Sing the notes in solfege, then in rhythm. Now put it all together and you have a song. She never missed a class, not even on holidays. Phyllis was indomitable. She taught many a class from a wheelchair and even taught a voice class for staff and patients in the rehab facility where she was recuperating from a broken leg. She continued to share her knowledge and wisdom to within a few days of her final cadence. Phyllis will be remembered by many as a caring and talented teacher, performer, mentor, and friend. The Lexington singers were dear to her heart and are a most fitting legacy. Thanks to the strong foundation by Phyllis Janess and the amazing work of my immediate predecessor, James Ross Bean, the Lexington Singers has continued to grow as an organization. We now have four children's choirs with over 150 young singers, and our adult choir is over 180 on the roster. We also have a handbell choir just recently started. It's conducted by Jeff Marsh, and it's called the Lexington Ringers.
Hello, I am Whit Whitaker. I am going to share a brief reflection of my time and experience with Ms. Phyllis Jeunesse. I came to the University of Kentucky in 1985 after having studied one year at Kentucky State University. Ms. Jeunesse was my first voice instructor at the university, the first female instructor that I had had to that point and only the second instructor in my young college career. Mr. Ness was very knowledgeable about the voice, very knowledgeable about repertoire, and she knew how to get the most out of her students. Over the years, my time with her proved to proved to be very valuable. One of the things she taught me was never to be apologetic about what you present as an artist on the stage. And that was hard for someone who is introverted by nature, who is green coming into college, and someone who to this day, is not the most confident performer. But that was a valuable lesson for me to learn that once you step out on the stage, whatever you have to offer is whatever you have to offer and you should not be ashamed or feel like you have to apologize for any of your mistakes or successes as a performer. She taught me that. We've had a really close and good relationship throughout the years. And I specifically mem remembered one time when she emailed me after having seen me perform. And she talked about how proud she was of me and how wonderful it is that my voice has matured and grown. And she ended this email full of accolades and praises for saying how much she loved me and how proud she was of me. And uh, she likes the, the man and the person that I have grown into. That's Mr. Ness. Caring without a doubt and always nothing but a kind word to say. 
I am who I am in part because of who she was and who she is because her spirit lives on in all of those who loved her. I thank you, Ms. Janess, for helping me to become the person, the man, the performer, and the singer that I am. I may not be the best of all of these, but I don't have to apologize for it. Thank you. This next song is a beautiful song. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of sad in nature, melancholy, but the poetry is very exquisite. It is by an English composer by the name of Roger Quilter, who is primarily known for his songs and his musical styles. My first introduction to Quilter songs was through Miss Phyllis Jeunesse when I arrived at the University of Kentucky in 1985. Recent loss of this beautiful, wonderful icon, Miss Phyllis Jeunesse, it dawned on me how the words kind of speak to the loss and to the tears. And um, it was kind of comforting. Weep You No More by Roger Quilter. I hope you enjoy this. Sad fountains, what need you flow so fast? Look how the snowy mountains have sun doth gently waste. But my son's heavenly eyes melt not in weeping. While she lies sleeping Softly now, softly lies sleeping Sleeping Sleep is a reconciled May 1st, 1976. Dear Phyllis, I know that every singer must feel some sadness to see your reign come to an end. I can't imagine another conductor anywhere who could make weekly three-hour rehearsals a pleasure for almost 11 years. We could never thank you enough for the many richly rewarding hours, generously seasoned with spine-tingling excitement, beauty, and fun you have provided for all of us. Although I am sorry to see you leave singers, I am glad you will still be in Lexington and that our friendship, which I have always treasured so much, can continue. I sincerely hope that your work from now on, whatever new direction it may take, will continue to provide the challenge, joy, and satisfaction you have found here. Much love, Naomi. Here are the present day Lexington singers performing an early American hymn that was originally conducted by Phyllis Jeunesse in 
Oh, that's a really interesting chapter in my life. Uh, I suppose it was in the mid-50s, I don't remember the exact date, that somebody decided it would be nice to have an Easter pageant. And so they developed this, and uh, uh, there was a pageant in the Coliseum at 6 o'clock on Easter morning, and the music was provided by an orchestra, but also by um, choirs from all over the city. I mean, each church was in, church or temple was invited to uh, send singers to sing for this pageant. And so we had a chorus of about, oh, 100 plus people. Uh, and the first year, Millie Lewis, who was a very fine music educator at UK, conducted. And then the next year, she, she thought, well, I don't want to do this anymore, and asked me if I would. And um, I was a completely uh, inexperienced conductor, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I was willing. That was probably my main qualification. And so we did this for, I suppose, two or three more years. Um, and I must tell you that uh, pageants are not my favorite form of art, but I... At that time, I had in my mind that if we get this chorus together and they sing together at Easter for a couple of years, maybe they would like to form a community chorus. Mm -hmm. And so after a couple of years, we decided that by golly, we would start and we announced auditions. And in the fall of, I think, 1958, we did start the Lyceum uh, And I, I conducted them for 17 years and it was interesting because at that time people said to me things like, uh, when I decided to resign, um, oh, they'll never make it. And <laughs> I got to give them two years. And of course, here they are, um, close to 50 years later, and certainly going strong. They're bigger and better, and they do a wonderful job. And it makes me very happy uh, to, to realize that it was, the group was strong when I left it, and they have become stronger since. So. That's striking to hear 50 years. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay. do so hope you enjoyed the show. Be on the lookout for more information regarding our virtual concert for the holidays. And if you'd like to know more, if you'd like to know how to join, or if you'd like to support the Lexington Singers, please visit www.lexing.org. Lexing out, friends. I'm proud to be in my 23rd year as music director of the Lexington Singers. The amazing thing about our group is we've only had three directors in our entire history, 62 years. That's almost unheard of for a community chorus in the United States. Our success is largely due to the great foundation and the wonderful standards set by Phyllis Janess when she founded our group. We're going to leave you now with a gospel number up above my head featuring Courtney Allen as a soloist from way back in 1966. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your continued support of the Lexington Singers. <laughs>